Hello again, I'm Peregrino and today I'm going to be talking about machine learning. Yes, finally. This is the last video in the series about what I was doing here at the University of Glasgow in the last year. And as I said, it's about machine learning. This course was purely mathematical and the lectures were a bit weird. Most of the time, the lecturer was just doing maths operations. I, in particular, was not used to these kind of lectures. However, let's discuss what the lectures were about. During the week 1 and 2, we focus on linear regression, while being introduced to some of the machine learning concepts like supervised and supervised learning, as well as the fact that we need to make assumptions when approaching a machine learning problem. As for the mathematical side, we created a linear model, that is, a function of our input values and a set of parameters. Machine learning aims to find the best values for those parameters. To find the best values is necessary to define a measure of performance, and in the case of linear regression, we can do this through the loss function. We can do this using several techniques, but one of them is using partial derivatives. Once we have calculated these parameters, we can start making predictions by plugging new input values into our model. During the first two weeks, we only saw how to deal with simple models. In week number three, we started to deal with more complex models involving more than two parameters. Here is when the vector and matrix representation of a problem is useful as they can be used to represent in a more cleaner and compact way all the variables and parameters involved in a problem. We also reviewed the concepts of complexity of a model, generalization, overfitting, and how to use cross-validation to make an efficient use of our data and improve our models. During the fourth week, we started approaching the linear modeling problem from a different angle by introducing noise into the model. This, considering that our model could be represented by a line with noise added. As an introductory step, we had a quick review of what random variables are. This was a different approach to obtain the parameters of our model, as in this case, we were not using the loss function. Instead, we were maximizing the likelihood of obtaining the target values of the inputs to our models. The theme of the fifth and sixth week was the Bayesian method. We defined a prior and a likelihood, and we used the Bayesian rule to compute the posterior density. Here, we assume that the prior is conjugate to the likelihood to make the computation tractable. This allows us to find the posterior distribution of the parameters that generate our data. The professor walked us through some of the exercises with different distributions of priors and likelihoods. Also, he briefly introduced the idea of using the marginal likelihood as a possible model selection criterion. During this week, we also saw how to calculate the confidence in our parameters and predictions. Weeks number seven and eight were devoted to supervised classification algorithms, that is, to classify a set of labeled data points. We covered two classes of algorithms, those that produce probabilistic outputs and those that produce non-probabilistic outputs. We learned about k-nearest neighbors, a fast non-probabilistic classifier, which is sensitive to class imbalance, that is, having more examples of one label than any other and outliers, that is, extreme values. We also review the base classifier, which is a probabilistic classifier that makes the decision based on base rule. The main idea behind the algorithm is to decide the prior and likelihood densities, and then compute the predictive probabilities. Another tool that we review was logistic regression, that is a probabilistic binary classifier whose output is the probability of a new object belonging to a particular class. In this lecture, the professor introduced three approximation techniques to work with difficulties when trying to apply Bayes' rule. The three techniques that we review were point estimate using MAP, density approximation using the Laplace approximation, and a sampling technique known as Metropolis Hastings. The last classifier we review was support vectors machines, an algorithm that finds the decision boundary, which maximizes the margin between two classes of objects. As part of these lectures, we reviewed the intuition of how to represent data that is non-linearly separable by projecting it into some other space. The content of these two lectures helped us in understanding the mathematical concept and geometrical interpretation behind several classification algorithms. These insights help us to describe the models and also to decide which algorithm to choose for a specific use case. In the final two weeks, we learned about unsupervised learning, and particularly the task of clustering. 
that is, to group sets of unlabeled data. We covered two algorithms. The first one was k-means, which is a simple non-probabilistic clustering algorithm, which is very simple, but it's also sensitive to initialization. The second one was Gaussian mixture models. This is a probabilistic extension of k-means, used for soft clustering. Finally, I would say that the course was good. Overall, we learn about the mathematical concept behind most of the common machine learning algorithms that you might see on a blog post, but they never explain in there. You just learn how to use the libraries and that's it. However, I have this feeling that the professor could have been better at explaining things rather than just uh, being there and doing the mathematical operations on a projector. That's all for me, at least for this series of videos. In the near future, I'll be talking a lot more about machine learning or data science. So if you have any questions about any of the previous videos, and particularly about this one, which I really, really didn't explain a lot, just post that in the comments and I'll try to answer. I hope you found this series of videos useful. Uh, there is a playlist, I'm going to be linking to that, so that you can watch them all. But as I said, I hope you found them uh, interesting and entertaining and useful. And you know, if you did, just give it a like in this video and subscribe if you haven't done it yet. And I'll see you in the next one.